shifting uh, gears a little bit uh, for our um, pelvic fractures. So these are really rare. So we're going to just kind of hit the high points because we've gone a little bit over time. So uh, these are only going to be about 1% to 2% of all your pediatric fractures. The uh, things that you see probably much more commonly than traumatic uh, pelvic uh, fractures are avulsion injuries, and these are usually in active adolescents. Okay, so it's usually the uh, avulsion injuries are the result of low energy trauma. They're usually doing some sort of explosive activity during a sport, and I would say that this uh, is a very highly tested uh, image, um, and you want to know what inserts on each of those points um, because it, uh, it will come up both uh, in real life and also on tests. So a 14-year-old boy presents with a right growing pain, which occurred during soccer practice. He hears a snap and immediate pain on physical exam. He has pain over the right hip with resisted knee extension. Radiograph is shown in figure A. What muscle origin is at the site of injury? OK, so we can see that there's this um, where's my pointer? piece coming off the AIIS. And so that's going to be the insertion site of your rectus femoris. Okay. Um, uh, so you want to know all of this information. Uh, ASIS avulsions, that's the sartorius. AIIS, that's the rectus femoris. And ischial avulsions, that's going to be your hamstrings and adductors. And then these uh, other ones are much less common. As long as you know your anatomy, it's uh, easy to answer these questions correctly. Um, again, as we said, AIIS is your rectus femoris. That's probably the most frequently tested. ASIS, your sartorius, that also comes up. Okay. Um, pelvic ring injuries are generally the result of high energy trauma, um, usually from either uh, peds versus auto or uh, just motor vehicle accidents. And um, the uh, pelvic ring injuries tend to be more of the APC injuries. Um, these in kids have a higher rate of being a single uh, pelvic ring break. Lower rate of hemorrhages seen um, tends to be sort of smaller uh, vessels that vasoconstrict on their own. So kids, uh, while we sometimes do see um, them hemodynamically unstable, it's less common. Um, acetabular uh, fractures are uh, very rare um, uh, in kids until their triradiates are closed. Um, but if they do happen before their triradiates are closed, keep in mind that it can cause a growth arrest, and so they need to be followed for that. Okay. Um, and just know that there's a high rate of um, CNS and abdominal uh, injury in uh, cases where there's traumatic pelvic injuries. This is, uh, they're high energy uh, mechanisms, and so they tend to have uh, the other high energy trauma injuries that you see associated. And you want to be looking for femoral head injuries, dislocations, acetabular fractures, um, in addition to the pelvic ring uh, fracture. Just like Dr. Shirley was saying, uh, don't have the satisfaction of the search. Uh, look, look carefully for the other injuries. Um, so, uh, there's a need for uh, operative intervention uh, in acetabular type fractures if there's any significant step off, um, but both for um, the uh, pelvic ring injuries and the acetabular injuries. Um, after the triradiates uh, closed, those tend to be ones where they're more going to behave like adult fractures. Um, this is just a straightforward uh, knowing the ossification centers. You'll see it in the ileum at nine weeks, ischium at 16 weeks. Uh, the um, fusion tends to occur at 12 years in girls and 14 years in boys of the triradiates. The uh, development of the acetabulum, the depth of the acetabulum, uh, results basically from uh, the concavity uh, developing in response to the pressure from the femoral head. So just like in kids that have congenital uh, hip dislocations or hip dysplasia where their femoral head's not sitting deeply in their acetabulum, they end up with a shallow um, acetabulum. That's the same concept here. Okay. And then um, there's three secondary ossification centers of the acetabulum. Um, that's kind of highlighted here. We'll just gloss over some of this. Um, so uh, the um, 
other secondary ossification centers of the pelvis, um, don't confuse these with avulsion fractures. So the iliac crest, this is your wrister sign, and then the ischial apophysis, um, this is going to appear at that 15 to 17 year old uh, range and is going to fuse at 19 to 25. Okay, so there are a couple different classifications, but um, most commonly if you're using a classification scheme for pediatric pelvic ring injuries, it's going to be um, the um, toroid Sieg classification. And basically type 1 is your avulsion injuries. This is the thing that you're going to see probably the most of. Um, type 2 is when you have iliac wing fractures. Um, type 3 is when you have uh, fractures of the ring but no segmental instability. And type 4 is when uh, the, there's a ring fracture and uh, it's unstable. Okay, so uh, in terms of presentation, um, these uh, tend to be high energy injury, again, motor uh, vehicle accident, um, except for the avulsion injuries that are more sporting injuries. Um, you want to be monitoring for hemodynamic instability. Um, and it's important to remember your ABCs and complete trauma workup. The uh, radiographs uh, that you want to look at, both AP, Jude views, inlet and outlet, that's essentially the same uh, as what you use for the adult pelvic fractures as well. Um, but it's important to note that in pediatric pelvic fractures, it's actually very easy to miss them on a, a simple plain radiograph. So if you're not getting these additional uh, views and not scrutinizing them, um, and sometimes even if you are, um, you want to have a high threshold uh, for um, looking for these injuries or you'll miss them. If uh, you have high suspicion but don't appreciate the fracture on a plain film, then you want to get a CT scan. Um, you can also get an MRI um, in the case where you are looking for uh, avulsion uh, injuries if they're not obvious on uh, x-ray. So in terms of treatment, uh, so generally if there's not a lot of displacement in terms of the avulsion injuries or the iliac wing fring iliac wing fractures, um, then you're going to just treat these uh, with protected weight bearing followed by therapy. Um, and then the uh, type 3 pelvic ring fractures without segmental instability um, and without any displaced acetabular fracture, uh, those can also be uh, treated with uh, just protected weight bearing. In terms of the acetabular fractures, again, even if you're small and you have uh, some growing and remodeling capability, uh, you need to have joint surfaces lined up. That's a good principle for basically every fracture that you're looking for. So if there's any uh, disruption of the joint surface of the acetabulum, that uh, would be treated operatively re whether you're 8 or 18. Okay. So six-year-old boy is hit by a car while crossing the street. He's intubated at the scene. A radiograph of his pelvis is shown in figure A. He is hemodynamically uh, stable and has no GU injuries. CT scan of his abdomen and pelvis confirms symphyseal dia diastasis measuring 1.2 centimeters and right sac sacroiliac joint diastasis measuring 0.7 centimeters. What is the most appropriate next step in management. Again, this is going to be less than that two centimeters uh, that we talked about. Um, and so he's uh, somebody that can be just treated with bed rest, um, uh, followed by progressive mobilization. So in general, uh, for types uh, one and two, uh, you sort of start out with protected weight bearing for about four weeks do some stretching and strengthening, and then uh, gradually return them to activities. If it's type 3 and it's a uh, not a unstable ring injury, then you can just let them weight bear as tolerated, as opposed to the type 4s um, where you really keep them on bed rest until it's uh, healed in a little bit. Uh, times that we would do ORIF uh, are, again, fairly rare. You have to have a significant amount of displacement, generally more than 2 centimeters, or some involvement of the articular surface. We try to be physis sparing around the triradiates. Um, and uh, usually this would consist of smooth pins across the physis that then would be removed. Again, th this would be a very uncommon um, injury. And again, ORIF with avulsion injuries rarely needed. They'd have to have a lot of displacement. And I think we already talked about uh, any any significant joint displacement of the uh, acetabulum 
you need to have a smooth joint surface. So um, whether you're 8 or 18, uh, you don't want to rely on remodeling for the articular surface. And then um, if there's a vertical shear or anterior posterior compression injury, then um, especially if there's hemodynamic instability, there's a role for placing a binder in the trauma bay. Um, and then you can convert this to an external fixator as soon as possible because you don't want to leave the binders on for long. Again, that's just like the principle in adults. Um, but remember that lateral compression fractures uh, are not going to be improved with a binder because their mechanism of injury is compression, um, and so that uh, you won't make things better by putting a binder on an LC fracture. Death is uh, fortunately rare, um, and this is usually due to associated trauma injuries. Um, uh, and again, with kids, um, we see maybe even at a big, high tra high volume trauma. Uh, one center like uh, CHLA, we'll see maybe w maybe one uh, case a year with a pelvic uh, fracture with a large uh, amount of hemorrhage and hemodynamic instability. Um, and just be cognizant that if you have uh, an injury to the triradiates, those can uh, cause a growth arrest, uh, which can uh, create a problem because your uh, acetabulum may be insufficient for the space of your femoral head. So you have to be looking for that. Um, uh, again, this is just, you can get progressive acetabular dysplasia if that triradiate closes early. Um, and bar excision could be performed, but is unlikely. Um, oftentimes, uh, if this happens, again, this is, this is, we've now gone to the super, super rare. So um, uh, not highly commonly seen and not highly tested. Um, you would think about a late reconstruction potentially with a pelvic osteotomy. Uh, leg length discrepancies uh, could also occur if you have a uh, physeal injury. And again, malunions, nonunions, those things are possible but not common. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.